Installing windows is simple. Just add some sealant, pop the new one in, and secure it down. Anyone can do it. But Microsoft Windows on the computer, that's a whole other beast. Thankfully, MSI sponsored this video where we're gonna be showing you not only the best way to get a super clean Windows 11 install on your new laptop or PC, but also a boatload of big brain tips for enthusiasts who want to tune and optimize their new install. And you better pay close attention because whether you're new to reformatting or you were there when the deep magic was written, things have changed a fair bit especially in the last few months. Let's kick things off with the basics on this MSI Stealth A16 AI Plus notebook. If you're more after the advanced tips, by the way, check out the chapter markers in the video timeline. If you've got a pre-built, you won't need to do this part, but to make sure that we're covering everybody's bases, we're gonna show you how to download the installation media for Windows 11 from Microsoft. On a separate device, download the media creation tool. While it's downloading, grab a flash drive and plug it in. Make sure that it doesn't have anything on it that you care about because it's gonna get wiped when we turn it into our Windows installation drive. Next, run the setup wizard we just downloaded. Accept the EULA, leave the box unchecked for use the recommended options for this PC, then select USB flash drive. Select the drive that you inserted from the list, hit next and walk away. Or watch the progress bar, cheering enthusiastically for it to cross the finish line. I won't judge. Once it's done, click finish and start looking for your LAN or network drivers. In many cases, these drivers will be included with Windows, but if they aren't, your Ethernet port and Wi-Fi won't work at all until you install them separately, which can be a bit of a pain in the butt. Every brand's support page looks a little different, but the process should be similar. Look up your motherboard or system model, navigate to support, and then drivers for your version of Windows. Grab both LAN and Wi-Fi and toss them into a separate folder on the same USB flash drive that we just put our Windows install on. It doesn't really matter where. Then safely eject your flash drive. I know it probably doesn't matter, but still, then pop it into a USB port on the computer you're installing on. Now this next step is optional, but I have found that it reduces the chance of anything bad happening. Power down your system and remove any drive that is SSD or hard drive that isn't the one you want to install Windows to. You will thank me later. Power on your computer and mash the hotkey to boot from USB. For MSI, that's typically F11, but we'll have some other common ones here on screen. If for whatever reason that doesn't work, go into the BIOS by restarting and then mashing one of these hotkeys and change your boot order to put the flash drive first. Now we're ready. Get your clicking finger ready because this next section is rapid fire. Select your language and time, select your keyboard type, select install Windows 11 and check the box after reading carefully that you agree everything will be deleted including files, apps and settings. At this point, you might get asked for a product key. If the machine you bought automatically loads that up for you, that's great. If not, you can select, I don't have a product key for now, and just choose the version of Windows 11 that matches the product key that you definitely intend to obtain later. Accept the license agreement, then delete any partitions that might be present on your new boot drive. Now that it's clear, select it and click next. When it says ready to install, select install and watch that sweet, satisfying number go up. Go number! While this gets going, I'm gonna prep our Ninite package. Nobody likes installing all their apps one by one, so good news, you don't have to. Go to ninite.com and select any apps you want. I'm gonna grab a web browser, a WizTree for storage management, Cubit Torrent for Linux ISOs, even though this is a Windows install guide, sure. Foxit PDF Reader, ShareX for more powerful screenshot management, 7-zip CCP codec pack, and Steam. Then we just download the installer file. One of the coolest things about 9 is that aside from automatically opting out of any included junkware, it always grabs the latest version of your selected software. So you can take that personalized installer and use it over and over. By the way, if you prefer Chocolatey or Winget, those are both great as well, and they support far more apps, as well as automatic app updates, but we wanted to keep this guide pretty simple. Once Windows is installed, it's time to walk through the UBI, or out-of-box experience. First, it's gonna get you to set your language, region, and it's gonna get you connected to the internet. It will also check for updates and apply them if there are any available. Then it will ask you to sign into your Microsoft account to unlock your Microsoft experience. Sure. Plug in your email and password, then please wait. 
If you've got a compatible webcam and you're comfortable with facial recognition using Windows Hello, feel free to set that up now. Otherwise, click skip. Create your pin, hit OK, then be sure to opt out of all the telemetry hooks that Big Bill wants to dig into you and hit next. At the welcome back screen, click more options and then set up as a new PC. Let's hit the almighty skip button when it asks you to customize your experience and then click it again when it gives you the option to use your phone from your PC, unless you're into that. In which case, scan the QR code and walk through the setup. It'll ask you if you wanna back up your phone's photos to keep them safe. That you might wanna skip if you're already paying for a backup solution. And then we're probably gonna choose not now when it tries to give Edge permission to access our browsing data. You might get offered a free trial of Microsoft 365 Family. Personally, I'd decline this since it's easy to start a subscription later if you really want to. Then we're gonna decline the cloud storage offer as well and hit next on the Microsoft 365 ad. Now we're finally done. So with Windows up and running, it's time to update our drivers. We'll start with the network drivers that we put on our flash drive earlier. Just run the setup and follow the wise words of the wizard. If it's a .bat batch file, right click and run as administrator. Now we just fire up 98.exe and let it rip. Once that's done, we open up our browser of choice and sign into our profile, if we like, so we can update the rest of our drivers. This MSI Stealth 16 AI Plus has an RTX 5090 mobile GPU alongside a Ryzen AI HX370 CPU. It's great for productivity and gaming on the go, but it won't do either of those things until we update its drivers. For our CPU and chipset driver, we're gonna go straight to AMD, where we simply select our device type and model, download, unzip, and install. If Windows gets a little scared, don't worry, just hit the More Info button and then run anyway. Remember, it's okay to do that when we're grabbing a file from somewhere like AMD's very real website. It is not okay to do that when that random Steam friend who asks for gift cards suddenly sends you a download link. I just don't trust anybody like that. And neither should you. As for our GPU, same thing. We're gonna go straight to NVIDIA. But here we have a couple of options. Studio drivers are updated less frequently with the intention of making them more stable for professional use, while game-ready drivers are more likely to contain fixes for the latest titles. If you like the features of the NVIDIA app, like their gaming overlay and easy game recording, you can download that and follow their install prompts. At this stage, you might have all of the drivers you need, but you also might not. Open up Device Manager like so and see if you have any of the dreaded yellow exclamation points. Usually tracking down drivers for these is as simple as going back to the motherboard or system driver download page, but sometimes it can be a bit more challenging involving Googling vendor and device IDs and then tracking down obscure install packages from sketchy websites. Or hear me out, most manufacturers these days, including MSI, have gotten pretty good about including software that will grab all the drivers you need for you. So you can just head to the Microsoft store, search MSI Center, install it, open it, finish the setup wizard, and then navigate to live update through the support tab at the top. Unselect any extra utilities that you don't want and let it do its thing. If you want the convenience of MSI Center, by the way, but you don't want it running in the background, managing your startup apps and services is a great best practice for keeping your system lean and mean. Open up Windows Settings by right-clicking the Windows icon and selecting Settings. Then click Apps and then Startup at the bottom. Scroll through until you find what you're looking for and toggle it off. It really is just that easy. Now MSI Center will only run when you explicitly tell it to, and this same process can be applied to many other app and service. The last big things I like to do are spam and check for updates a couple times, so I know my system's up to date, and then do a bit of light de-bloating. You know, nothing major. We just wanna rip out a few things that you personally might not want. For instance, our Stealth 16 AI Plus comes with Copilot, which you might like, but if you don't, getting rid of it is actually shockingly easy. Open Settings, go to your Apps tab, click Installed Apps, then scroll down or just search for Copilot. Once you find it, click the three dots on the right and select Uninstall. It really is shockingly easy these days. Thanks, antitrust regulators. Now we can go ahead and do that again for OneDrive, Teams, and any other apps we don't feel like we need day to day. And that's it. You might have noticed we never installed any antivirus. That's for good reason. These days, Windows Defender is a pretty solid option. And as we learned recently, more antivirus is not necessarily better. At this point, if you're just a regular everyday normal Windows guy, this is more than enough to get you started with your fresh install. But what about 
irregular, some days abnormal windows guys. Well, we've got some magical tips for you too. And we're gonna be showing you on this Vector A18 HX A9W from MSI. This beast is great for the engineers out there who need a portable workstation that can handle demanding software. With up to an AMD Ryzen 9955HX and a GeForce RTX 5080, along with Wi-Fi 7 and a PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD with its own dedicated heat pipe. It's even got a 240 hertz refresh rate, 2560 by 1600 display with 100% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space. Magical. We'll start with bypassing the two most irritating things we just dealt with. Windows setup requiring an internet connection and a Microsoft account. Check this out. We start the setup like we just did, but this time we keep our network cable unplugged and when Papa Gates complains, we do a very bad thing and hold Shift F10 to bring up the unholy command window and conjure a better user experience by typing ubi backslash bypass nro. Press enter to cast the spell and boom, we're in for now. There are reports of bypass NRO being disabled in the latest preview build, so use it while you still can. Now for that pesky Microsoft account. This one is a bit more involved, but it also bypasses the network requirement, so hang on tight. First, disconnect from the internet, then start your Windows install. After you're prompted to add a second keyboard, the setup wizard, some wizard that is, will check for updates put on your own wizard robe and hat, hit shift F10 and then type ms-cxh colon local only. Hit enter and voila! You've got a new create local user window. Create a secret password. Mine's going to be melon. And then create answers for some security questions. Click next and then select no on all of the toggleable options under privacy settings in order to disable telemetry except for diagnostic data. That one can only be toggled to send required data only. Click accept and bada boom bada bing! You are now at the desktop screen. You can also do the above while connected to the internet. Just cast those same spells once it asks for your Microsoft account much further into the setup process. But what about the folks who can't get through the setup process? Windows 11 requires TPM 2.0 support, which is only present on relatively modern systems. Wouldn't it be nice if we could wave our magic wand and make those requirements disappear? Yeah! I'm back. One solution is Rufus, a boot drive creation utility that we're quite fond of around here. A full explainer is a bit beyond the scope of this video, but basically you get the Windows ISO from the media creation tool, like we saw before, import it into Rufus, tick the appropriate boxes here, and run the installation media that it creates. Once you're at the Windows 11 version selection screen, cast Shift F10, then type the incantation RegEdit and press enter. Now, RegEdit is a powerful spell, so be careful and follow these steps exactly. Also, understand that at this point, you proceed at your own risk. In the newly opened registry editor window, Expand the H key local machine folder. Expand the system subfolder, then right click on setup. Select new, select key, and name our new key lab config. Within that key, right click on empty space and select new, then dword 32 bit value. Rename to bypass secure boot check. Then create another dword 32 bit value and rename it bypass TPM check. Double click the first one, Set the value to one and select okay, then do the same for the second one. Once you're done, this will restart the installation process, but it should now skip those hardware checks. You know what you should never skip though? Checking out our excellent WAN desk pad at lttstore.com. Before we move on to our most advanced section, now that we've shared the black magic that is the registry editor, let's fix one of the most annoying features of Windows, online results in the Windows search function. Press Windows R, type regedit, and hit enter. With our registry editor open, navigate to the search key through current user, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, search. And if Bing search enabled is present, set its value to zero. I cast you away. If it's not, create it as a D word 32 bit value and then set it to zero. I cast you away. Now look for allow search to use location and set that to zero for good measure. 
Then set Cortana consent to zero. Close the editor, restart your PC, and give it a try. Behold, a search function that kind of works now. For our last trick, we're gonna combine most of what we've already talked about into one powerful incantation, replacing our standard Windows install with a custom XML on Raider. 18HX AI gaming laptop from MSI with up to a Core Ultra 9 285HX and GeForce RTX 5090 laptop GPU drawing up to 260 watts. This thing doesn't need too much of a helping hand when it comes to debloating Windows 11 and increasing performance, but gosh darn it, we paid for all the performance and we're gonna squeeze every last drop out of it so we can get more frames on its 18 inch 4K 120 Hertz mini LED display we'll be using Schneegan's Unattend Generator. By the way, we'll have links below for all of the tools we used today, as well as our three laptops from MSI. Schneegan's doesn't do anything for your drivers or third-party apps, but it lets you tweak a lot of options in Windows, and it can be used for multiple installs, so feel free to choose what's right for you. Here's what I'm selecting for our basic install. Pick your language, keyboard layout, and home region. Select Bypass Windows 11 Requirements, Set your computer name, choose your Windows edition. You can even enter a product key here if you want to. Create your user account name and make sure that it's in the administrators group. Then remove or add any other users you see fit. Then we're going to check disable widgets, do not show Bing results when searching in the start menu or the search box, and under Windows 11, select remove all pins. Our enchantment is almost complete. We just need to check Copilot, OneDrive, and Teams in the remove bloatware section and we're done. Now we click download XML file and download a Windows 11 ISO using the media creation tool as before. Then we use AnyBurn to edit that ISO and put the auto unattend.xml file in the root of the ISO. Save your modified file. Remember Rufus? Well, we're going to use it again here to make a bootable USB flash drive, but this time with our modified Windows ISO. When you do this, make sure not to select any of the options in Rufus with the customize Windows installation pop-up. We've just done that with our custom XML and we don't want it to get overwritten. Once it's ready, use that media to install Windows and marvel at how simple the process is. No fuss, no muss, a la kazam! and our installation is complete. To compare apples to apples, we took a screenshot of the Stealth laptop from MSI with a standard Windows install and one after our de-bloating efforts. Let's see how much of a difference it made. Ah, not much, but darn it, I paid for the whole computer, so I want to use the whole computer. And the impact on an older machine is likely to be more noticeable. I hope that everything we've covered here today helps you in your Windows journey. Thanks again to MSI for sponsoring this fun, I hope, but also informative video. And if you want to check out any of the laptops we used today, we will have them linked down below. Uh, uh, Abra, Cadabra, credits. If you liked this video, maybe check out our 11 things we hate about Windows 11 video from a few years ago. Some of that stuff is fixed actually, but not all of it.